Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, welcome back to Giga Texas on Wednesday, the 19th of October, 2022. And today is the third quarter financial results meeting, which will be held here at the factory today. It'll be starting at about uh, 4.30 Central Daylight Time, 2.30 Pacific Time, or 21.30 GMT. And you can also, with this information, you can view the live stream through the Tesla Investor Relations website. For today, we start off with a long, good view inside the entire west side of the building. We start off on the north end, look at the 4680 production, then where the structural packs are being built. And also, we see quite a bit of the Model Y structural packs being stockpiled on the third floor as you can see by this particular image. Also get a really good view inside the completely reconfigured main entrance location. Now we've watched a lot of the construction going on from the outside, but today you get a chance to see what's going on the inside. And also a little bit more of the construction that's going on on the south end for General Assembly Lines 2 and 3. The other thing I want to talk about today in the intro is up at the electrical power station. You get a chance to see a lot of progress, but also as you can see by this image here, we get a look at what are the site plans for how this will be ultimately configured. And we can compare from the drawing to what we actually see on the site, and we see pretty good agreement. So again, overall, a lot to see today. Very active as usual. Much colder today. Uh, so fall has definitely arrived here at Giga Texas. I want to say thank you again for watching. I do appreciate all of the support and uh, have a great week. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. This morning we'll start off on the northwest corner and then work our way from the north all the way to the south along the west side of the building. Now on the left hand side on the third floor you can see kind of a break room or cafeteria for many of the employees and on the second floor is some office space. Now as we approach this portion of the building I'll get a little bit closer view. This is where the 4680s are actually built and you can see quite a bit of the equipment uh, in place and operational and a lot of the uh, workers uh, trying to get the uh, 4680s cells, the individual cells, produced. And uh, there's been some speculation about the new bill with the EB tax credits and credits for battery manufacturers. I think in addition to what we see here at Giga Texas, we'll see other uh, battery production for Tesla, possibly over Fremont, uh, to help take advantage of those credits. And I think that that is actually a very positive and a bullish sign for Tesla and its production of the Cybertruck, Semi, and other vehicles, rather than what some people think as that may be a negative. But we'll continue to monitor that, but I think the future is very bright for 4680 production here at Giga Texas for sure. Now as we enter this part of the building, take a look at these white racks with some of the red uh, uh, parts as well. I'm not sure, but I think this may be taking some of the battery cells and preparing them for the structural packs. Uh, it's hard to say for sure. This area does look like it's still under some sort of construction, but it's very close to this part of the building where the actual structural packs are manufactured. So something to keep watching for. Now in this section, you can see quite a bit of the machinery, the robots in the background. Uh, they are making the uh, packs. You can also see all of these wooden crates. And it's hard to say, but uh, since they're doing a lot of 2170 uh, model Ys here now, maybe those are the batteries that are being brought in and used as well. Uh, but in the very background of the upper floor, you can see those large racks. This is where the structural packs are 
taken once they're assembled and then they're charged for the first time and tested. Now another thing to notice is these black large crates that we see here on this part of the building and then we're going to see it continue past the wall onto the entire next part of the building. All of these are marked as Model Y structural packs and these would be the 4680 versions that are being manufactured and stockpiled here on the third floor. And there are quite a bit of them. They run, run from near the window all the way to the back wall and then all the way across uh, this section to the uh, wall that you see on the right hand side. And as we get a little bit closer, I'll bring the drone up just a little bit of more altitude so you can look back to the back end of the wall and see just how many of these 4680 structural packs are being stockpiled. It is a large number. Why they are doing this, I'm not really sure, but uh, perhaps they are making an inventory for um, future vehicles once they have enough of the 4680s. I'm showing you the third floor here. You can see it's dark, but there's quite a bit of uh, equipment and also a bunch of crates up there as well. So it may be temporary storage. I also wanted to show you all of the progress inside the main entrance. As you can see it's been reconfigured tremendously. There's a staircase on the left, a mezzanine to look down onto the first floor from the second floor. Looks like maybe a uh, welcoming uh, section being built with the walls in the middle. Um, and just overall quite a bit of re work and reconfiguration of that side since the last time the public was inside at the annual shareholders meeting. As we continue farther to the south, what I'm trying to show you is views into the second floor. You can see the progress with all of the construction that has been taking place. Now we can't see on the first floor, but uh, the uh, second floor is open in the center all the way to the first floor and they're installing quite a bit of machinery and equipment to support uh, the General Assembly Lines 2 and 3. With all of these trailers you know that even more equipment is being brought in and you can see some of those crates just inside the receiving docks. As you look through the second floor windows you can see how that open area in the middle is definitely coming along and uh, it's now not just basic construction, but it's uh, fitting out. You can also see some of the equipment near the windows and also openings in the far wall all the way into the stamping extension portion of the factory. I'll wrap around the building. You can kind of see how this part of the second floor uh, appears. You can see that open location in the middle of the factory. And you can also see down into the first floor in a few of these sections. But overall, I hope that uh, these views inside this portion of the building was informative and helpful for you. It's not a section of the building that I'm able to see all the time, so I'm glad I was able to image that today. I pull all the way back so you can see the overall view of the south end of the factory, the uh, cyber pond, and the ramp with all the Model Ys. And uh, just a lot of activity and a lot of changes, especially with the concrete removal on that concrete uh, lot where the Model Ys are. I wanted to give you a view of this trench work that is going on here near the steel of this material storage. Uh, the pipe appears to be purple. That would indicate that it is for treated water, maybe for irrigation also. And you can see how the trench work uh, is going along the easement right underneath the power lines. And you can see where it ends here. And then I'm going to pull back a little bit farther. You can see where the horizontal drilling operation took place and where they are preparing a trench in this general direction. So I think that eventually that purple line will connect to the very large purple line that was pulled under the river very recently in this section where you can see the excavators and the trench work and the trench boxes. You can also see a little bit uh, remnants of the very large pipe as well. So from this point of view you can see where that other pipe is and it looks like it would be a natural connection but I'll have to continue to monitor that. There's also this excavation with kind of this red material. You can see there's a pipe underneath it 
So uh, it may be a branch that will go more towards the north uh, in addition to the other branch that goes towards the west. So that'll be something I'm monitoring uh, as uh, time goes on. This is another good view of this pipe that's in this particular trench right now. You can kind of see how it's going to go off towards the west. Also note the amount of steel materials here on the storage location uh, just, under, just south of the cyber pond. And it just continues to uh, be built up here and also on the uh, east side where they've moved some of the materials to allow for that pipe work. Now this is a good view of all of the Model Ys on the center rectangular section of the concrete lot. You can see on the left hand side where the excavation work of the concrete has already taken place. And on the right hand side where it's well underway to remove all of this section as well. Now I would imagine that their Model Ys are going to have to be moved pretty soon so they can continue this excavation work uh, at some point. Also notice how the blue water pipe is in a trench kind of uh, with the outline of what used to be that concrete location. So it kind of suggests that we'll see something rebuilt here with the same general shape. I'll work our way back towards the west so you can get an idea of how this ramp and uh, the lot with all of the vehicles appears today and just how many of them there are. Also notice this excavator is uh, filling in the trenches indicating that the blue water pipe, this would be a potable water pipe or a drinkable water uh, has been installed. And just look at how many Model Ys are arranged on this uh, concrete lot. Now as I continue to pull back I'll show you how the blue water pipe trench has been filled in all along this particular side. And it pretty much looks like this portion has been completed for the pipe installation. And this is a good view of all of the concrete that has been recently removed on the west side of this concrete uh, ramp. interesting delivery coming off of this evergreen truck right now. It looks very large. It's uh, wrapped with some material, so hard to tell exactly what it is. But you can see that the crane is already hooked up. The forklift is pulling it out of the truck, and they're preparing to put it up onto that platform to go into the, the second floor of the uh, General Assembly uh, building. I'm also trying to show you the stamping extension inside. As noted, it's very difficult to get angles in here, but you can see a lot of activity, a lot of equipment, and uh, still work to prepare in this door the underground isolation foundations, which once completed will uh, be where the AIDA components are uh, assembled to make a very large stamping press. And I've, I've heard as this is related to the Cybertruck uh, production. And the AIDA components for that very large uh, stamping press are right here. You can see them arranged next to the building. And if you look at the truck, uh, the little van next to them, it gives you a really good idea of the scale of these parts of this overall very large machine. I also wanted to show you all of these broken down crates. Uh, the crates are being brought in at a very high rate with a lot of equipment inside. They're moved into the General Assembly at very point, various points and then they're broken down outside here when they're empty and then taken for recycling. Uh, also, we take the opportunity to be on the body and white roof. I'll show you the HVAC ducting, uh, some of the preparation for solar panels as well, and some of the uh, recent modifications to these four rectangle uh, sections that have now had the roof decking removed. You can see the roof beams and they're preparing to install more of the HVAC ducting, very similar to what you see on the left-hand side in the large opening that they've been working on for a few weeks. But overall, it looks like progress here is continuing pretty rapidly, and it looks like this is a priority to get the uh, HVAC system functional in this part of the building. Now, as I work our way towards the east, I'm going to turn back towards the Body and White building just to show you some of the excavation work that is going on in two locations here next to some of the new receiving docks that have been cut into the walls, as you can see. Looks like they're preparing some of the plumbing, and then they'll be re-putting the uh, concrete there for the aprons, and then we can see this section of the loading docks or the receiving docks operational. This small parking lot next to the helipad shows many Model Ys. 
uh, that have been recently produced. Now the inventory here does change to some degree every day. I can't say exactly how much, but uh, for some reason they are using this point uh, to keep some of the Model Ys at least temporarily. Now as we move our way towards the primary new car staging and transportation lot, you can see a lot of Model Ys uh, ranged on the left hand side waiting for the trucks to pick them up, some on the north side along the fence line, and then a bunch more here on the east side, uh, some of which are actively being picked up by the trucks. Now the trucks are constantly arriving and departing here at Giga Texas and they're taking most of these vehicles about 30 miles north to the Hutto railhead where the cars are put onto trains and then shipped out to the rest of the country. As I continue to pull back, I'll show you the warehouse on wheels and how it looks today. One of the things you may note is that uh, many of the trailers, uh, especially on that uh, north end, are now gone. This could just be a swap out of trailers or it, should, it may indicate something with the uh, uh, parts deliveries and the utilization inside the factory. Maybe the production ramp is going at such a rate that it's uh, exhausting many of the trailers. It's hard to say, but definitely something has uh, changed. I'm gonna work our way back towards the warehouse on wheels on the east side. I wanna show you a couple of things. One, this workshop next to this train, uh, the crane, and it looks like this may be a steel fabrication section where they modify some of the beams and the columns for installation somewhere else onto the site. Uh, something similar used to be on the south end, but it was removed so they could do the trenching for that large purple pipe that uh, we discussed earlier in the video. You can see quite a bit of components are stored here just to the uh, east of the fence for the warehouse on wheel yard. Some of them are wooden crates. A lot of them are in these green plastic wrapping, and it's just uh, uh, another indication of the uh, speed of construction and uh, progress that they're making at Giga Texas. This is the south end of the battery cathode plant. You can see how the wall installation is coming along. Four receiving docks, two doorways for personnel, and a large open section to allow for equipment to be moved inside and configured in this portion of the building. This is a good view of the trench work with the blue pipe. This is for drinkable or also known as potable water, and it looks like it's continuing to work its way towards the north. You can see this large openings uh, on uh, either side of this uh, large tall section of the building on the south end. I'll give you some views inside. The uh, sun lighting is very good. You can see how the wall panels have been installed inside and there's some uh, uh, steel silver pipes. I think those may be related to the roof drainage system, just the way that they are configured. I'm going to pan the drone a little bit to the north and move the drone back just a little bit to give you some views of how this center section of the building is coming along with the, all the wall panels. Again, the open sections of the wall panels are there to allow for some larger equipment installation. And here you can see how they're continuing to uh, work on trenching for that uh, blue potable water uh, pipe. I'll give you a closer view inside here of the ground slab and the three deep foundations that uh, continue to get rebar ahead of concrete being poured onto this portion. Uh, looks like three very large and heavy equipment that's going to be installed here and then the rest of the slab is heavily reinforced as well. Take a look at all of the interior walls that have been installed as well. and. Uh, really starting to fit out how the interior structure uh, is coming along. See more wall panels being installed here as well, and they've almost reached the north end of the east side of the building. A lot of materials stored here next to the white tent. No real progress on this steel structure uh, that I've uh, been monitoring it, and hopefully we'll see something change soon. Up here at the uh, clearing location, uh, Still some water for left over from the heavy rains on Monday, uh, but uh, you can see how this area looks and also the steel that is being stored up here next to some of these large equipment. Let's move our way back towards the building. I'm going to show you the north end 
and it looks like there's going to be five receiving docks here. You can kind of see them down uh, uh, on the bottom floor and also probably a doorway for personnel as well. As we continue here, you can see some work and maybe trench work on the west side here. And it looks like some pipes are being prepared for installation at some point. The crane here is getting ready to put more wall panels. So very soon it'll be very hard to see inside uh, what is going on with the battery cathode plant. Good for production, but bad for uh, drone viewage. Uh, as I continue further to the south, I'll show you the work and progress here on this uh, concrete apron. The mounts have been uh, prepared but not put in concrete yet. The manifold system has all of the concrete manhole covers and the rebar in this section is prepared but it's all waiting for concrete at some point. And here's another view of the warehouse on wheels yard from the north and you can see how many of the trailers are missing today as uh, the continue to uh, have the ebb and flow of trailers coming in and departing here at Giga Texas. We've now arrived over at the electrical substation or also known as the switchyard construction site. And uh, as you can see, activity is definitely picking up here. You can also see downtown Austin in the background, so a very nice view. But I wanted to highlight the drawing that we have here and compare that with a similar angle. And this gives you an idea of how this will appear and how the construction is uh, pretty much mimicking what we see in that particular drawing. Now, as you can see, there's work on that A-frame uh, continuing and also some drilling. We'll get down closer in just a second to give you a better view of that. Also, the large steel power pole sections are still waiting here on the north end for assembly and installation on the uh, circular mounts that you can see near this equipment. So let's bring the drone down a little bit lower and we get a good view of the work that is going on here see quite a bit of the steel being installed on the footings here at the bottom of the screen. Another large section of drilling going on. This will be to allow for rebar cages to be put in, the mounts, and then the concrete. And this will allow them to continue to install more and more of the components, much like you see with this large A-frame. And I believe based on the drawings that uh, I showed, we're gonna see possibly three of these A-frames uh, just uh, stacked one on another right in this section. You can also see how the work on the western half is coming along. The control room is pretty much completed now on the exterior and they're fitting out the inside. These two rectangle sections. Uh, it looks like most of the water has been pumped out from all of the rain so they can get back to putting the rebar and then concrete here. And uh, just overall, a lot of progress at the electrical substation or switchyard today. I'm going to drop the drone down here real quick to show you something interesting. Now these white trailers, the red ones similar here, we see these all over the site now and they seem to be uh, expanding. These are usually used to clean out plumbing pipes and hold the uh, dirty water or the contaminated water after construction. So it may be that we're going to be seeing some uh, testing and cleaning out of a plumbing system here at Giga Texas in the near future. You can see this uh, walkway and the curbs on this side have been completed. The plumbing work in the middle uh, now has uh, continued to progress here right opposite of the paint shop. And it looks like they're continuing to work this section to the west. The paint shop itself continues to have the materials that have been arranged near the base of these platforms. Uh, unpacked and then moved inside. Uh, most of them is going on to the second floor and you can see some of the activity going on today. Uh, most of this is also part of the paint shop modular system that they've been installing and in my previous video we talked about a new permit 
that uh, is designed to uh, help with the final assembly. And now as the video is ending, I noticed another truck arriving with a lot more of the SSIISA components, which supports this modular paint shop system. So continuing to grow and progress. So I'm going to do the big pull away today to give you an overall view of the north end of the factory and how Giga Texas appeared today. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do very much appreciate the support and the viewership. And also, as a reminder, third quarter financial results today. So check that out on Testar Investor Relations. Have a great day.